gripping testimony in a sensational murder trial. Jody Arias about to take the stand for a second day in her own defense. She's charged with murdering her boyfriend by shooting him in the face, slitting his throat, and stabbing him 27 times. Yesterday, Arias told the jury about an abusive childhood at the hands of her parents. A bunch of friends and I one night decided, like the last night I was there, we decided to sneak out of the house and hang out. And um, my parents woke up and found out. So when I came back, um, my dad asked where I had been. And um, I, was, I had fallen asleep. He woke me up around 6. And so when I, I sat up and I was disoriented because I had been sleeping. So I didn't give him a satisfactory answer. So he um, hit me across the face and I fell back down. And then he sat me back up and asked me again. And I didn't give him a satisfactory answer. So he hit me across the face again. And um, I fell down. When you say he hit you across the face, did he punch you? No, it was an open-handed, hard slap. Okay. Do you recall, did you bleed? No, I didn't. Not that I recall. Did you bruise? Um, not that I recall. Did it hurt? Yes. Her mother sitting there in the front row as she made that testimony. Let's talk about it once again with our legal panel, Lise Wheel, a Fox News legal analyst. Doug Burns is a former federal prosecutor. I have to quote the AP on the, on the way this trial began. They write, a soft-spoken and calm Jody Arias laid out the story of her life in painstaking detail, beginning with the day she killed her lover. Yeah. What a story. Um, why put her on the stand, Lise? Well, they almost had to. They've got to try to get one juror on there to keep the death penalty off the, off the table. That's really what their, uh, her lawyers are trying to do, to put her on there to try to, to humanize her a little bit. I think it's a real stretch, John. I think this is about the weakest or one of the weakest self-defense cases I have ever heard about. I mean, when have you last heard about a self-defense case where somebody slits the other person's throat 27 <laughs> times and, by the way, then shoots them in the, in the forehead? It's not self-defense. I don't think the jury's going to buy it, but they really had no other choice but to put her on. Uh, Doug? Any trial lawyer will tell you, however, that you never know how this is hitting the jury. I mean, they are humanizing her, to use Lisa's terms, undemonizing her, my term. Um, and theoretically, the jury has to reach a unanimous verdict, so you just don't know. Having said that, when you look at the case objectively, it would seem to me that it's more of a heat of passion type of defense instead of self-defense. In other words, the law school classroom example, you come in, your spouse is in bed with someone else, you stab them 27 times. I'm puzzled and scratching my head as to why they didn't go down that but road. They didn't go down that defense. road. They didn't go down that road. They're going self-defense the whole way, and it's just, there's no way they can make a self-defense claim. This is before, by the way, cross-examination has started, John, because... Right. When cross-examination starts, you know what they're going to, if I were, had her on the stand, I would very methodically go through story number one. Story number one, I wasn't there. I have no idea what happened. Story number two, it was two other people that did it. Two, now, two finally, burglars. Two burglars, broke, yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, finally, she's saying it was her. And well, oh, so, so soft and meek. And, oh, you poor little thing. Well, and least, all this child abuse. And this has never come out before, Doug? But she actually came up with a justification for having lied twice, seriously, which is, no, she said that she was going to commit suicide. And so she panicked and told yeah. those lies. Look, I admit it's a little bit strained, uh, right. but she did it, come up with that. Well, or the she, lawyers did. She, she said to a television show when they interviewed her, they, she said, no jury would ever <coughs> convict me. <coughs> right. Sounds a little cocky. Exactly. Well, and, and she's probably looking at the stats out there, which it do, does show the jurors are very, uh, you know, reluctant to convict women. I mean, the, the, it's just absolutely true there. Three women on Arizona's exactly. death row. She could be the fourth if she gets the death penalty. Is testifying, you know, in her own defense, is that enough? No, ab absolutely not. And I, you know, whether you're for or against the death penalty, we do have a death penalty in this country. And if we're going to impose a death penalty, if not this case, when? Could it backfire, Doug? I mean, could the jury look at her and, and just really not like the person on the stand. Absolutely. And the specific reason why it could backfire is that in most cases, somebody takes the stand and that's the first time you're seeing them. Here, in this case, they're going to show a video of a prior media interview mm -hmm. where she calmly lies right through her teeth. And that is what's the biggest problem of all. Well, she looks robotic on there, don't you think? I mean, she just... But the jurors are going to so say, look how she calmly lied to the anchor right. like a John, and now she may be doing it again. Looks a little rehearsed. Yes. yes, that's my take on That's it. what the lawyers are for. Lee Wheel, <laughs> Doug Burns, we'll keep an eye on this case. Thank you.